Another violence starts the weekend in Philadelphia. Four people are dead, six others injured in seven separate shootings in the city. Good evening, I'm Dawn Timoney. This surge of violence all happening in the span of just 24 hours. Our Dave Kinchin live at police headquarters. And Dave, community leaders are saying something needs to be done, anything to stop this. Yeah, they'll take pretty much any valid and viable solution, especially with so many people on edge because the weekend is only half over. We did reach out to the mayor's office tonight. They updated us on what they're doing on the ground. So she says people want any viable solution to this crime, this violence, this murder. More police. Well, uh, we need an alternative to that. We need to reimagine Listen, <laughs> more police, support the police. Every time there's an interaction with a son man that goes bad in the last 30 seconds of the interaction is on the Internet. Don't take that and run with it and use it as a way to disparage all police in all 17,985 police departments. Okay? Support your police. And get more of them. That's a viable solution. Yeah, they'll take pretty much any valid and viable solution, especially with so many people on edge because the weekend is only half over. We did reach out to the mayor's office tonight. They updated us on what they're doing on the ground. Well, Philadelphia police detectives worked one of the city's latest weekend shooting scenes at Kensington and East Lippincott that left two men critical. Residents tried to embrace some sort of normalcy at a community outdoor festival and concert in the city's nice town section. But the trauma of gun violence still lingers. I keep saying this. The city governmental agencies need to come together and sit down as a task force and take a, 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 a strategy working together to be able to reduce the violence. Stand yeah, bro, that sounds good. But during the course of that, in a city like Philadelphia with 1.5 million people, 57% sun people population, 57%, 95% of the murder victims are sun people. So therefore, you can assume or presume that the majority of the interactions with police are going to be with sun people. They used to have the mob down in Philly. The Philadelphia faction of the mob is not what it used to be. They kind of dried up. They've been hit hard too by the feds. Of course, the Italians are complaining about being targeted by the criminal justice system. But yeah, they, they got hit hard. So Philly mob is not really big. You got some bad on burritos there, bad on braids. A lot of bad hombres there, but still, 95% of the murder victims in Philadelphia are some people. So let's look at it like this, brother. Those cops are going to have the majority of their interactions are going to be with some people. And it's going to be a lot of those interactions. It's going to be task force. It's going to be gang units. It's going to be beat cops. It's going to be special initiatives. It's going to be special neighborhoods that are going to be, you know, get special attention. And those neighborhoods are going to be sun neighborhoods. And out of all of that, there's going to be an incident where a young sun man fights with the cops. And it goes left. Maybe he's caught on camera getting beat up. Maybe they'll just take the last 30 seconds of it or whatever 30 seconds make him look like a complete victim and post it online. Will you then get online or on TV or get it behind a podium or get on your social media account and whine about it? Yes, you will. And that's part of the problem. 
Some of these dudes that's shooting in the crowds, hitting little kids, killing people over BS, making the neighborhoods unsafe. Sometimes they need their butts kicked. And everybody in the community is scared of them, but the cops can kick their butts. Because the cops aren't scared of them. And you're going to get on TV, or you're going to get behind a podium, or you're going to get on social media and whine about it. And you ain't going to say nothing about the other thousands and thousands of interactions each day that the cops in Philadelphia alone have that are making the community safer. As safe as it can be. You'll talk about the one. Where some hood booger out on, on on bond for. Probably several violent offenses. Probably shot somebody last night. Is getting beat up by a cop. You gonna whine about that. And fuss about that. And complain about it. And until we can get men like this. To stop doing that. We're going to have a hard time with this community. I keep saying this. The city governmental agencies need to come together and sit down as a task force and take a, 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 a strategy working together to be able to reduce the violence. Stanley Crawford's Black Male Community Council is providing security for the Nice Town Festival. He started the organization after his son was murdered. So we get an opportunity to work, in, to work with the community, in the community, cleaning up the community, mediating problems between the youth. Services needed now more than ever and from anyone who can provide them. We talked about four murders overnight, including a 29-year-old man killed at a gas station on the 5,000 block of Winfield Avenue. A man in his mid-30s murdered on the 1800 block of East Tioga. A 46-year-old man shot multiple times and killed in a Rite Aid parking lot on the 6700 block of Woodland Avenue. And a 30-year-old man killed on the 1700 block of South Hollywood, shot multiple times throughout his body. Another man was hurt too. And we had to come out these silos instead of the DA working over here, the police commissioner working over here, the mayor working over here, council working over here, the judges working over here, the probation. We need to all come together, community activists working over here. Let's put our brain trust together. Mayor Kinney's office released a statement denouncing the violence. In part, he said, quote, the uptick in gun violence that we've seen across the nation and right here in Philadelphia is heartbreaking and we must keep working together to stop it, save lives and create a safe city for us all. He touted a record $155 million investment in violence prevention programs for this year alone. Residents we talked with say community investment is needed, but they want neighbors to team up too. Because there's no role model. There's no person there that's showing them they can do different things. So they just think that they can shoot people because the police is here to police. They're here to do their job, but to save the kids is our job. I can name about eight to 10 YouTubers right offhand that if they said what he just said they would be called they would be called the C word <laughs> cause yeah you can't say that word anymore but I can think about 8 to 10 YouTubers that if they said what he just said they would be called the C word okay they would be called the Uncle Tom a sellout What kind of community is this? I don't believe that, though. I think there are a ton of role models in these neighborhoods. Now, here's the thing. Are these, it's the kids. The kids want to be role modeled by those men. There are tons of black lawyers and entrepreneurs in Philadelphia. There's tons of black guys working all types of jobs in all types of fields in all types of careers in Philadelphia that are willing to do mentorship willing to take time out of their day to you know talk to young guys and 
spend time with young guys. It's plenty of guys like that. I think what this guy is saying is that he's probably looking for what I say never works. The old head gangster coming back, telling the young boys, man, when I was young, had all the money and all the girls, man. And everybody on the street respected me and feared me. But don't do what I did. Go the straight route. It ain't worth it. That ain't going to work. So, yeah. There's nothing. There's no. There's no body from that life. That has found a way to crack the Da Vinci Code. And get through to these young guys on the streets of these inner cities. I'll give them that. But a city like Philly. Oh my God, there's tons of brothers out there that are doing so, so many things, positive things. But those brothers are ducking and dodging bullets too. Those brothers is in the house early too. Those brothers are scared, looking over their shoulder. Those brothers is moving out to the suburbs because it's not safe. That city investment includes $22 million that will go to mid-size or large-scale city anti-violence organizations. The city says that won't immediately solve the violence crisis, but it's part of a larger strategy that also includes help from the White House. Dawn. And to look how much money they pour into these inner cities. I mean, it's like a bottomless pit. They just pour money and money into these inner cities. $22 million, and they're not expecting any results. Listen to that. They're about to give these groups, because all these guys that you saw in this video are activists of some kind, or have some kind of organization. That's anti-violence organization. They're about to dump $22 million into this and expect zero results. But this country is racist. Listen to what he just said. They're about to dump $22 million into a bottomless pit and expect nothing back. That city investment includes $22 million that will go to mid-size or large-scale city anti-violence organizations. The city says that won't immediately solve the violence crisis, but it's part of a larger strategy that also includes help from the White House. Dawn? All right, Dave Kinchin, live for us at police headquarters. Thanks, Dave. You, well, D.C. police are investigating a triple shooting that left two men and a woman injured. This happened this morning in Logan Circle near 12th and M Street. Now Remember I told you I've done several videos about this Logan Circle area. Um, this is where the, um, <laughs> the executive for the Peace Corps was shot and killed leaving um, a restaurant with his wife. This is where um, that young, that woman, that mother, who um, had words with a son man over him leaving a, you know, a, a, a scooter in front of her house. She just asked him politely, could he not, you know, just lay it there on the ground. He shot her and her four-year-old son. And this was a Glacier Glider woman. And then there was the shooting at the restaurant. I covered where the police chief went off on the crowd of white liberals. You might have seen that video too. All these incidents were in the last two months. And now you have this incident. I promise you, when I was growing up, I lived around there for, for a few years. I lived in Shaw for a few years. The Shaw neighborhood, which is directly um, east of this neighborhood, Logan Circle. Logan Circle is not a neighborhood where they're shooting at. I've lived, I've lived in D.C. all my life. This is some new stuff, man. They've literally had a decade worth of violence for that neighborhood in two months. Sierra Fox has the latest. Tonight, D.C. police are still searching for the suspect responsible for shooting three people near this Logan Circle neighborhood. Luckily, in this case, none of the victims are suffering from life-threatening injuries. Gunfire erupting in the nation's capital has many worried about D.C.'s recent crime wave becoming all too common. It's, it's disgusting. It's terrible. I feel like that we got since we got out of COVID, a lot of people have kind of forgotten their social cues. They might have a little extra anxiety and everyone's kind of lashing out right now. But hopefully everything will kind of slow down. 
Come on, bruh. Come on, bruh. Please, man. Stop this, man. Stop this COVID social cue stuff. Please stop this, man. This is the George Floyd effect, man. I've discussed it plenty of times on this channel. If you have not heard my theory and you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Go watch my last 10 videos. You'll understand what I'm talking about. This is the George Floyd effect. I feel like that we got, since we got out of COVID, a lot of people have kind of forgotten their social cues. They might have a little extra anxiety and everyone's kind of lashing out right now, but hopefully everything will kind of slow down. Around 5.15 in the morning, a man was shot on G Street in Southeast. An hour later, around 6.15, police found two men and a woman suffering from gunshot wounds at 12th and M Street in Northwest near Logan Circle. Investigators are now searching for this blue Toyota minivan. Kara Lau says the violence is terrifying. I actually moved here a few months ago, and so I haven't even lived in that city that long. And all really I've heard since I've moved here is about the gun violence and pretty close to where I live as well. If I was this woman, which I'm not, but if I was a young person moving to D.C. with their whole life ahead of them, I would I would support my police department. I would vote for policies that, you know, contributed to more law and order. I would never bash the police, regardless of how bad some 22nd segment of a 40 to 30 minute interaction between police looked. I definitely would never protest, never march for anything about criminal justice reform because that only helps criminals. I would go to my job, I would do my live my life, have fun, keep my head on the swivel. Situational awareness. You're walking back to your car late. Maybe you want to walk with a friend from a club. You hear a loud popping sound. It's not fireworks. Get down. Okay? No. What's that? What's that? Oh, my God. Pop, pop, pop. What? what, what, what? No. Get down. If you ever get in a confrontation with the sun man, whatever it is, you must know that they are willing to die for that. If it's a seat on a metro bus, if it's a space in line at the Walmart, if it's a parking space, in a parking lot. They are ready to die for that. Or do a life sentence over that. You can't compete with that. Let them have it. And if you do have a problem. Call the police. But don't stand in his face calling the police. Go somewhere and call the police. That's really all I could tell some woman like this coming to D.C. Because she's food out here in these streets. And there's no need for her to contribute to it by marching and protesting and whining every time there's some negative interaction between a D.C. police officer and a young D.C. thug. I actually moved here a few months ago, and so I haven't even lived in that city that long, and 
all really I've heard since I've moved here is about the gun violence and pretty close to where I live as well. Back in June, 53 year old Jeremy Black, a Peace Corps executive who dedicated his life to service, was struck and killed by a stray bullet after leaving a restaurant with his wife and friends on R Street near Logan Circle. It's scary to hear and it's always in common areas like 14th Street. Like I go there for dinner all the time, so it's scary to imagine I could just be out for dinner and there could be a shooting. Lau's first MLB game experience at Nats Park was when fans ducked under seats and ran for their life in fear after hearing shots fired outside the ballpark. The crime ultimately suspended the game. It was terrifying, honestly. People were crying. It was just chaos inside the stadium. So it's really, I feel like all throughout the city, there's been these shootings. It's 2021. We have She's been here for two months. So it's really, I feel like all throughout the city, there's been these shootings. Yep, it's 2021. We have to wear a mask to go into a bar. So nothing surprises me these days. It's unfortunate after speaking with lots of people today, it seems as if they've almost become numb to the gun violence. As far as the shooting that happened this morning near Logan Circle, the motive is still being investigated. Back to you.